evening peoples and welcome again to my living room for the fourth uh, and final installment of our series on Amos who is one of the prophets in the Hebrew Bible. Um, so Amos was writing a generation before Isaiah and as we've um, been over before during his lifetime the 12 tribes of Israel which was the nation of Israel was split into two nations after a bit of a civil war. That's a bit of an understatement. Uh, so the northern kingdom of Israel is made up of 10 of the 12 tribes of Israel and the southern kingdom of Judah is made up of two of the kingdoms of Israel, two of the tribes of Israel. Uh, so Amos is coming up from Judah to the north and he is trying to uh, remind people to live into the laws of God and the love of God so that there will not be as many divisions, so that people will be treated fairly, and so that, as he says, justice will roll down like waters, and righteousness like an ever-rolling stream. Um, so uh, in a bit of a recap of Amos, uh, it's also important to remember that uh, prophecy in the Bible is not like fortune-telling, so it's not saying, it's not like um, astrology or you know, this month you're going to have a good month at work, or uh, in five years you are going to meet someone who will change your life. Uh, prophecy is a bit more of a rational cause and effect. If you don't change your ways, there are going to be consequences. If you don't um, have a fair, just society in which uh, the poor have enough to eat, then you are going to have uh, social unrest. You know, that's just what happens if you're jerks to each other. There's, you know, uh, if you're a jerk, then more people are going to be jerks, and it's just, it's going to get worse. So, you know, follow God and um, have a just society, and things will go better for you in the future. Um, so Amos is talking to the uh, chief priest of the royal temple, who is like an advisor to the king, um, and this priest really doesn't want to hear it, uh, because no one likes being told that they're doing things wrong, generally speaking, um, but Amos is still preaching the word of God to anyone who will listen and using as many different metaphors as he can so that people can understand him. Uh, so tonight our reading is the final uh, chapter of Amos, chapter 9, so verses 1 through 15. Hear now the word of the Lord. I saw the Lord standing beside the altar, and God said, Strike the capitals until the thresholds shake, and shatter them on the heads of all the people. And those who are left I will kill with the sword. Not one of them shall flee away. Not one of them shall escape. Though they dig into Sheol, from there shall my hand take them. Though they climb up to heaven, from there I will bring them down. Though they hide themselves on the top of Mount Carmel, from there I will search them out and take them. And though they hide from my sight at the bottom of the sea, there I will command the sea serpent and it shall bite them. And though they go into captivity in front of their enemies, there I will command the sword and it shall kill them. And I will fix my eyes on them for harm and not for good. The Lord, God of hosts, who touches the earth and it melts, and all who live in it mourn, and all of it rises like the Nile and sinks again like the Nile of Egypt, who builds upper chambers in the heavens and founds a vault upon the earth, who calls for the waters of the sea and pours them out onto the surface of the earth, the Lord is God's name. Are you not like the Ethiopians to me, O people of Israel, says the Lord? Did I not bring Israel up from the land of Egypt, and the Philistines from Kaftor, and the Arameans from Kir? The eyes of the Lord God are upon the sinful kingdom, and I will destroy it from the face of the earth. Except that I will not utterly destroy the house of Jacob, says the Lord. On that day I will raise up the booth of David that is fallen, and repair its breaches, and raise up its ruins, and rebuild it as in the days of old, in order that they may possess the remnant of a dome, 
and all the nations who are called by my name, says the Lord who does this. The time is surely coming, says the Lord, when the one who plows shall overtake the one who reaps, and the treader of grapes the one who sows the seed. The mountains shall drip sweet wine, and all the hills shall flow with it. I will restore the fortunes of my people Israel, and they shall rebuild the ruined cities and inhabit them. They shall plant vineyards and drink their wine, and they shall make gardens and eat their fruit. I will plant them upon their land, and they shall never again be plucked up out of the land that I have given them, says the Lord your God. This is the word of the Lord. So um, this is the final of the visions that Amos has of God that he is sharing with the people that he's talking to. And uh, kind of starts off with some strong and disturbing imagery of God hunting down people in every corner of the earth and hurting them. Um, so there is nowhere that you could go that God could not find you. And depending on your circumstances, that might be a threat or that might be a promise of something good. So God is reminding the people that God is the one who set the stars in the heavens and poured out the waters upon the earth. And that if you climb up the tallest mountain, God will be there. And if you tunnel down to the earth through the deepest layer you can get to, God will be there. And if you dive down to the deepest parts of the ocean where there are sea monsters, uh, by the understanding of the ancient world, God will be there. Oh, are you finished eating? Are you going to come say hi? Or... Uh, I just fed her before I started the video, so she was off snacking on cat food. Um, so God will find you absolutely anywhere that you go. Um, so this is a reminder that God is all powerful and all present. Hi there, come here. So one of the commentators I was reading this afternoon um, had this really delightful phrase that the people of Israel were inebriated by glory, which I just love, inebriated by glory. Um, so they have this image of themselves in their minds as God's chosen people, and throughout their history, God has favored them, and they've come to take this for granted. And, you know, of course, you know, God loves them, whatever, they can do whatever they want, um, because they are just taking it for granted that God will always support them, which, I mean, God will, but God also wants them to not be mean to each other. Um, God wants us to be better even though God loves us. God wants us to be better because God loves us. Um, I think that if you love somebody or something or an organization, then you want it to be the best that it can be. And that's what supporting it means. It's not um, a blind support of absolutely anything you say or do, I am behind you 100%. It's, um, I will help you work towards something better, and I will do the work with you and do the research with you and have the hard conversations so that we can continually improve and be the best that we can be um, so that Uh, so that we can uh, continually improve. Um, so even though uh, this passage starts off with some intense language of, you know, God destroying everything, there's a pivot towards the end where um, God is threatening the people of Israel, but then won't actually destroy the house of Jacob, which is the same. So um, Jacob was later renamed Israel by God. It's um, kind of a thing in Hebrew poetry to um, emphasize something by slightly different descriptions of it. Um, so, um, you know, the house of Jacob, the house of Israel, th those are the same things. So even though God is ticked off at us um, for not having a just society, God still won't destroy us because God loves us. So there is this gorgeous imagery of um, an abundant harvest, uh, and a harvest so abundant and just so fruitful and there's so much of it that it can't be harvested before the time that it's planting time again, which is just so cool. There's, and I mean, 
usually food will go bad in the field after a long enough time. But this is an image of there's just so much of it growing and it's so healthy and so abundant that you're you're picking it for an entire year and then suddenly it's planting season again and you still haven't picked everything. Um, but I think it's, it's also important to notice that uh, in this imagery of the abundant harvest, that means that there's food for everybody. And one of the recurring themes that Amos has been talking about before now is that the hungry are not being given food, that they're being overcharged for uh, subpar food, that the grain that they're buying is what's been swept off, off, off the floor. So it's going to be grain mixed in with dirt and wood shavings and whatever else, and that's what the poor are eating. And that is not how a good society should function. Um, so in, in this image of what can be the abundant harvest, everybody has enough. You washing your foot? Okay. <sighs> it's whatever. Say hi to the people. No? Okay. <laughs> um, yes, so everybody has enough to eat. And um, in, in that case, with everyone having enough and being equal, it's in that image that justice will roll down like waters and righteousness like an ever-flowing stream. So um, Amos, especially with that passage, is uh, a beloved writer in the Bible with some really lovely imagery and I think has an extremely timely message for us now because all societies have places where they need to improve no matter how much we love them. All organizations and churches can't just go on doing things exactly the way that they've always done things for time and eternity always going into the future because people change and we learn new things and we need to be constantly aware of the people we might be excluding or the people we might be hurting. To be a just society is to be uh, an informed society that is uh, open to change and open to hearing perspectives and open to um, having hard conversations and doing that work. So this was true in Amos's time, uh, it's been true since then, it's true now, and it will continue to be true for all future generations, that if we don't improve uh, our systems of justice, uh, the way we run society, the way that we treat uh, the poor, the least of these, the hungry, the widow, the orphan, the divisions between us are going to get worse and our disagreements are going to become wars and the nation of Israel, the family of Israel, will continue to be divided for all time. So we need to do the work now to bring people back together so that Israel and Judah can be reunited um, literally thousands of years ago, but more metaphorically now, that we need to uh, be kind to each other and find ways to live that are just and fair and right in the eyes of God. Uh, so here ends our little series on Amos. So uh, Ginger Snap and I will be back next week on Tuesday for another Bible study. Yes, I'll, I'll feed you earlier so that you can be here on time. I wasn't going to pull you away from your cat food. Uh, so good night, peoples, and I hope to see you tomorrow for our Wednesday evening prayer.